Abby from the YMCA Greater Monmouth County. I work at the Freehold Branch and I'm here to give you what's called MS Toning. Um, it's a great class. Um, we're going to use the chair to help us balance um, working all the different muscles in the lower body, some in the upper body. You can use a set of weights or you can just take your arms and circle them as you see fit. So whatever you can do, try. Um, if you have shoes, that's great. If you don't have shoes, just watch out that you have no tripping hazards near you and make sure you have water nearby as you will need to stay hydrated as well. So we're going to start with a nice little gentle warm up. Nice deep breath in. Exhale. I'm starting seated in a chair. You can sit in a kitchen chair. Anything that's a little sturdy would be helpful because we're going to use our chairs to help us do some of the movements and I don't want to see that chair move away. And one more. Nice and easy. Deep breath in. Exhale, we're going to circle those arms up and back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we're going to do one more. Now we're going to switch it to forward. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, Last one, one more deep breath in. And I would like you to take your hand and put it on top of your head, nice and easy. You can take your left hand and put it behind your back or just keep it on your lap, whatever's easy. All I want you to do is just turn, just at least side bend your head. Don't force it, just go as much as you can. Releasing tension, maybe in your upper traps, maybe you're tight in those shoulders. Just gentle, you don't push, don't pull. Just nice and easy. And release. Bring that hand, maybe switch it or keep it down, long. Same thing, or here, whatever's more comfortable for you. I get very tight in my shoulders, especially home, looking at the phone way too many times. Doing the best not to eat a lot of food, but we're home a lot, watching TV. Deep breath in, exhale, release. Clasp those hands in front of you. I want you to round that back. So you're just bringing it back, bringing your chin to your chest moving through your spine and release. So we're just gonna get some blood going. I want you to lift up your heels and then your toes. So we're just lifting up the heels and then we're gonna rock back on our toes. So we're just doing a seated, just to get a little blood flowing going in our legs. We will be standing up. If you want to do some stuff sitting down, you can continue. Get up, four more. Just getting it going. Three, you're working your calves and your shins, your ankles. Very important. Two, last one. Good job. So we're going to sit up tall. I don't want you to sit too far back because I don't want you to round that back. I want you to sit so that your shoulders are over your hips. And I want you to lift up your leg, just your left leg, not rocking back, sitting up tall, and drop it down. So we're going to flex into the hip flexor. Lift. You're going to feel the top muscle in your groin. And you're just going to contract. So lift up that leg and bring it down. Four. Nice and easy. Don't rock back too much. A little bit's okay. Keep that belly tight. And down. Five. And down. Six. And down. Seven. And down. Eight. Good. Nine. And down. Last one, and down. Good job. So you felt that hip flexor? They're very important, because that's the muscle that helps you get out of the chair if you need to get up. Helps you, very necessary muscle, and it does get too tight, and when it's tight, it doesn't do the work it needs to do to help you get up. You need more help getting up, it can't produce force. So let's do the other side, let's strengthen that muscle. So sit up tall, exhale, lift. So you're also pulling in your belly button. You're also working your abdominals. That's helping you stabilize your pelvis and your spine so you can get that leg up. Exhale, here's three. Good job. And down. Four. And down. Five. You could do these standing up as well. Six. You could also do them laying down. Hip raises. Seven. And down. Eight. And down. Nine, last one, and down. Good job. So now we're just going to add into that knee joint. Again, the knee 
just extends and bends, but it's a very necessary joint. So what I want you to do is extend that, you can keep that leg right on the, the chair. Again, don't sit all the way back, sit up in that chair, shoulders over your hips, pull that belly in, and I want you to just extend that leg as much as it'll go so you feel all the muscles in your quadricep working. If you can, you can even flex your ankle. Don't let it turn outward. Keep everything, the toes, knees, and hip in alignment. Bend it down. Extend it. There's two. Don't force the motion. Just contract into it. All these muscles keep your knee joint in alignment. Exhale. Three. Excellent. And down. So we do gentle holds. Four. And down. Five. And down. Six. And down. Seven. You got it. Eight. And down. Don't round that back. Nine. Sit up tall. Last one on this side. And down. Good. Shake out that leg. Woo. Quad get a little tight. They burn a little bit. So we're going to do the other leg too. Again, the leg is down. Pull that belly in. Sitting tall. Extend that leg. You feel all the muscles in your quadricep, the top part of the muscle on your femur. Contract. We're trying to do this and we want to stabilize that knee joint. Good. Your abs are still stabilizing through that pelvis and working. Your hip flexors are working not as much because you're not really lifting your whole leg off the chair. Five. My legs start to shake as I start to do exercise. Six. That's normal. Seven. Eight. Nine. Last one, and from here, before we really come up and we're gonna do the back of our leg, but since we're sitting, I'm gonna go into our squats, and we're gonna use the chair to help you. Now here's where I said, try not to find a surface where the chair isn't gonna slide out. I need that chair to be very stable, not on like a slippery surface. So make sure it's either on a rug or on something where it's not gonna move or it's a very sturdy chair. So when we're ready, I want you to sit up, come up to standing and bring it down. If you need to, put your hands down on that chair to give you a little support, if you can. If that's too much, just try to come up a little bit. So all we're doing is coming from a seated to a standing position. Seated, we're coming to standing. When you stand, I want you to extend your hips. I don't want you to arch. I want you to come up to standing, keep your shoulders, ears, everything in alignment. So we're gonna keep going with this movement. Here's four, and we're gonna go down. Five. And we're gonna come down, six, and sit, seven, good, eight, exhale, nine, last one like that. So we're gonna go into our hamstrings, the back of our thigh, we did the top, I like to balance and make sure we work the back of our thigh as well. So. When you're ready, I'm not gonna do, because I'm not gonna move that chair, I'm on a camera, but you can hold on to a chair, like hold on to the back. All I want you to do is bend one leg up, and you're gonna curl that leg in, you're gonna feel the back of your thigh contract, and you're gonna extend that leg down. So just contract it behind you, contract through, and bring it down. Three, this is where it would be helpful to have a chair, but I wanna make sure you see. Four, so I'm just squeezing the back of my thigh and working that quad, that hamstring muscle. Four, good. Make sure the leg or your ankle doesn't turn out. Five, and back, good. Six, I'm gonna hold on a little bit because I'm gonna wobble. Seven, and down. Eight, good. Nine, Last one like this, and down. So I'm just gonna turn, so now I'm gonna use my right hamstring muscle. Again, if you have the chair counter something you can hold on to, give you some stability. Knee is under your hip, and you're just gonna bend that leg so that the heel's coming close to your glutes, and extend it down. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, good. Seven, eight, nine. Last one, and shake out those legs. 
So we're gonna keep going with that lower body. They're very important muscles, bigger muscles. They support your spine. So we're gonna keep going with them and then work our way up the body, up the chain, into the smaller muscles of the upper body. So we're gonna keep going, but now I want you to put one foot in front. If you have stability issues, keep going with two legs and work the two legs. But we're gonna go into single leg squat. So just put one leg, tippy toe it in front, but don't lean if you can, don't lean. And I want you to put your hands wherever they help you. You can lean back to hold that chair. We're gonna sit down through one leg. So now I'm tippy toeing, but most of the weight is into one leg. So I'm gonna strengthen one leg a little more than the other. We're gonna do both so that you're equally strong. So if you have any hip issues, maybe one is stronger than the other, this helps to alleviate any misbalances, any imbalances between those two muscles. So we want to make sure we get into them. Again, if doing one versus the other is too much, then go back and do both. You're gonna do more reps, but that's okay. You'll build endurance in that muscle and all the muscles in that lower region. You're using a lot of muscles. Four, three, good. Two, last one, and you can bring it down. So we're gonna just take the left leg, and we're gonna tippy toe that right leg. They're both kind of in alignment, to same place, but now we're just tippy toeing the other one. And we're gonna come up into that single leg, one, and we're gonna sit back. We're gonna bring it up two, and bring it back. Three, and we'll sit back, good. Four, and back. Five, this is a great exercise for anyone recovering from any injuries in the lower body region, developing strength in those bigger muscles of the legs, but staying safe. Two, last one, and we're gonna come on up. So we're gonna keep working into the lower body region working into that hip joint. The hip is great because you can flex it, you can extend it, you can abduct, you can adduct, that means bring it across, and you can rotate it. My God, it works in all different directions. So we need to strengthen it in all those directions so that it's working properly and helps you stabilize your spine and your pelvis as you move all about your life. So we're gonna start off, and I love to do flexion and extension together. So just like we did seated, we're gonna flex that hip, and we're gonna bring it under, and we're gonna extend that hip. Again, don't lean, hold the chair if you need it. It's okay, mine's a little far. Then we're gonna bring it in, there's flexion. We're gonna extend it, keep that upper body shoulders over your hips. A little flexion, and an extension. So if you're uncomfortable with this, feel free to just do flexion, and then pause, and do extension, Maybe you'd rather do them separately. You can always do them extra after. Three, and out, good. Two, and back. Last one on this side. This is a great exercise. And nice and easy, we're gonna switch it. And I'm just gonna turn around so you can see the leg that's in front of me. Now we're gonna work my right leg. So again, here's my flexion. Knee, toe, hip in alignment. And I'm gonna extend that leg, keeping my hip straight. I'm not leaning, keeping myself upright. I'm not worried about how far it goes. I'm worried about getting that joint to stay behind me and under me. Three, and taking it back. Do the best that you can in moving those muscles the way they can. Sometimes posture affects you different ways. Over time, your muscles learn a certain way of working. We're trying to reset that, make sure they work effectively so your body can stay strong. Four more. And down. Good. Three. And back. Two. Take it back. Good. One more. Bring it back. And shake out those legs. I know they get tired, mine do too. So now we're gonna work on what's called abduction. We're gonna take that leg and we're gonna take it away. If I'm pretending I have a chair, because I'm not gonna move the chair all the time. So if you have a counter, a chair, the back, use it. So we're gonna take that 
that left leg, we're just gonna take it out. I don't want you to turn that hip, I want you to keep your foot pointing towards me. And you're just gonna lift that hip up, you're taking it away and bringing it down. So we're just abducting, it just means we're taking that, way, that leg away from the midline of our body. We're not rotating our leg yet. We're just taking it away from that midline. It's a very important exercise. Again, using a very small amount of the glute, but a very necessary part of it. This one helps to sometimes alleviate some sciatic problems. I can't guarantee it. You need to see a doctor if you have serious pain. But this is a very important muscle for working it. Good. Three, two, last one. Excellent. So we're just gonna switch sides. I'm gonna balance. Again, if you have something to hold on to, highly suggest you use it. You're not working the muscle any less by holding on to something. You're just helping your balance and helping your posture so you can do a really good job to key into that muscle. Here we go. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, good, five, Four, three, two, last one. Shake out those legs, they get tired. If you need to, just sit down. In fact, I'm gonna grab a drink of water. So maybe it's time for you to grab a drink of water. Staying hydrated and cool enough where you're not overheating is important too. So we just did abduction. We took our, bot, our leg away from the midline of our body. Now we're gonna bring it into a deduction, bringing it into the midline of our body. So the legs stand out, different posture. Again, hold on to something, counter anything. Take your left leg forward. So we're just gonna bring it across our body. You're gonna flex your ankle and you're gonna take it across. It might not go too far, that's okay. And bring it back. Cross your body and back. I'm just pretending I'm holding an imaginary counter. Good. So I used to play soccer. And when you kick, you take your leg and you kick it across your body and you lift it. So you're using a deduction. Those are some powerful muscles. Starting in your glute, bringing it in, and bringing it through. So I, when I explain, explain this in my classes, I call it a super soccer kick leg. Four, if you're trying to cross it across that field, this is how you're doing it. Three, two, last one, and bring it down. So now I'm gonna pretend I'm holding on with my left hand to that counter, even though there's not one here. I'm gonna take my right leg out, and I'm gonna take it across the midline of my body. One, pretending I'm kicking that soccer ball. Two, it'd be nice to kick a soccer ball again. Four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, last one, good job. So, we're gonna go into rotation, and we do that by using all three planes of our legs to do it. So what I'm gonna do is have you go, I'm gonna actually turn this way, so this way you can see my leg go all around. So we're gonna do circles. So we're gonna take the leg in front, out, back, out, front, out, back, so it's a simple exercise. We're adding external rotation into extension. So we're taking that joint. I'm not gonna take you down on the ground and do external rotation out to the side, but this is a great way to work that leg, keeping your hips stable. Good. We'll do four more, and then we'll switch legs. Three more. Meanwhile, you're standing on one leg, so you're developing balance and force on that leg. That's important too. Two. And back. And center. So we're working on also a little bit of ankle strength and mobility. Your ankle goes into, it stands, it, it is called plantar flexion, then you're bringing it back into dorsiflexion, but it also inverts and everts. So it goes, opens and closes. Smaller range of motion, but it does do that. So it's actually important. So again, this is standing normal. Take that foot in front, point that toe to the side, to the back. I'm gonna kick my water bottle, but that's okay. Out, back. 
Two, take your time, hold something if you need that. Three, it's almost like you're doing ballet here. Four, and back. Five, and back. Six, and back. Seven, and back. Eight, and back. Nine, last one, and shake it off. Excellent job, nice little deep breath. And let's just give a little gentle stretch, maybe you need a little hinge if you feel comfortable doing it. And bring it up. So we're gonna use our chair, and we're gonna work into our push-ups. So again, your chair should be in a sturdy position. I want you to step slightly away from it. So we're gonna work into our chest muscles in front of our shoulder. So step away and we're just gonna do a push up. So hands are in the thing, just bend those elbows back, keep your head and neck in line and then push the chair away from you. So we're just bending those elbows in alignment and push. You can do this on the wall as well. I'm gonna use the chair, three. And then I'm coming down, I'm gonna press it away, four. If you don't wanna do these, or you wanna to go to the floor and do some push-ups, that's fine too. Seven, good job guys. Eight, nine, one more, and down, good job. So, I'm gonna have you just loosen up those shoulders before we go backwards in it. So again, we're gonna stand with that chair where it is. I want you to step back and I want you to circle, circle your arm around that shoulder joint. We'll go in and around, nice and easy. And then I want you to circle the opposite direction. Keeping your head and neck in line with that spine, nice and easy. Just loosening up those shoulders, one more each direction. And the other direction. This is a great way to loosen up those shoulders. They're tight. And relax. So drop the other arm and same thing. Circle right on, right out of that shoulder joint. And circle the other way. And circle. And circle. And bring it up. So we're going to have you pick up one weight if you have it. If you don't have a weight and you have a water bottle. Hold the water bottle, maybe a can of soup if you don't want to hold anything, that's okay too. So I want you to hold your hand on the chair. I want you to have a flat back, pull that belly in. Don't drop the head, I want you to keep your head back. Looking at the floor in front of you, I want you to bend your elbow back and down. Bring it up and down. So we're just doing a single arm row. And down, five. Six, excellent, seven, eight, nine, last one on this side, and we're gonna stand up tall, we're gonna switch the hand. So I'm not gonna turn, because I'd have to move the whole chair. So now my left hand is grasping the chair, I'm hinging backward, my body is one line, I'm keeping my head and neck in line with that spine, I'm just gonna bend my right elbow behind my body and let it come down, two, and down. Three, this is what I look like. Four, and down. Five, and down. Six, and down. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So you're gonna put that down. So we did our chest, we did our back, and we're gonna go into our shoulders now. So I want you to take your arms, and you're gonna externally rotate your elbow out to the side, or your shoulder. You're externally rotating your shoulder, your elbow's flexing 90 degrees out, and you're gonna take your arms out, and we're gonna bring them to our side. Nice and easy. And bring it down. Standing tall, knees are soft, shoulders are over your hips, head is over your shoulder, your ears in line with your shoulders as well. Four, good. Five, 
If you want to hold light weights, that's fine too. Six, a can of soup, water bottles, anything. Good job. Eight, nine, last one like that, and bring it down. So let's do all three exercises again. Work the chest, work your back, work those shoulder muscles, and see how we do. So again, make sure your chair is sturdy. You can use a wall by putting your hands up against the wall and just bending your elbows back towards your body. So, and we're pushing. We're using what's called our pushing muscles. So our body's one line, nice and easy. You're just gonna bend those elbows and push the chair away. This is a closed circuit exercise. Your chair is not moving. It's stopping your body, the force. You don't have to do all the reps. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, last one, and up. Now here, if you have a weight, use a weight. It's very difficult to work that back unless you use a weight or something to add resistance. But if you just want to pull that arm in and down, it works just as well. Here we go. One and down. Two. Three. Four. Good. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, last one, and stand up, switch sides, and bring it back. One, two, three, four, five, six, same thing, seven, this is it from the front of you, eight, Nine, and down. You can put that weight away. Back into the shoulders. I try to get all of it working at once. So we take those arms, we externally rotate the shoulder, elbows flex at 90 degrees. Your wrist should be in alignment. Don't bend that wrist, keep it neutral. And we're gonna send it out, shoulder level, bend in. So we're using our back muscles. We're also using what's called the middle and lower parts of our traps. The back muscles, the upper backs, those are, tend to be weak exercise, weak muscles in our body. So we want to strengthen them and help alleviate any kind of neck strain that we might be doing as well. So these are important muscles that keep our head in nice alignment. Five more. Four. Three. And up. Two. Last one and bring it down. So we're gonna do an exercise for the abs. It's standing, it's balanced, it's a lot going on here. So what I want you to do is I want you to take your left leg up. If you can, put your hands up, but if you need to hold on with your right hand, so your left knee is up, and you're just gonna rotate to the left side, bring it in, drop it down. So we're gonna do one side. If you can keep two, use two, but if not, put the hand down, I fell too. Three, little rotation, and down. We're not pulling into that knee. We're not pulling into. One more. Open, and down. So nice and easy, we're just gonna switch sides. I'm gonna just pretend I'm holding on, because I don't wanna switch it. So we're gonna go here, rotate, and down. Two, if I was doing it with the hands up, I'm not bringing my elbow to my knee. I'm not torquing. I'm just giving a little gentle twist from my middle spine. Four. And down. One more. And down. Take a deep breath in. I know you're getting tired. We're going to come back to seating in that chair. And we're going to work some very important muscles in our body to help keep you healthy. So we're gonna sit neutral. If you wanna sit all the way back, you can. Make sure you have a good chair. If you want, you can put a pillow there. So, most people tend to get some neck issues. I want you to pull your head, keep your shoulders back and down, and I want you to do what's called a chin tuck. 
So you're going to pull your head in and release it. So pull your head back, chin tuck, double chins. Maybe they look better now. And uh, these don't look good on camera. But they're important to do. And I do them all the time at home. And back. So all you're doing is pulling your chin in and wrap. So I'm going to sit in the side view so you can see. I'm sitting neutral. Head. I'm just tucking my chin. And relax. Three more. And relax. Two. And relax. Last one. And relax. Good job. So the wrist. Wrist and elbow. Maybe you have problems with your wrist and elbow. So we're just going to turn the palm down and up. So hopefully that's something that doesn't cause a lot of pain. Not too many people have issues, but we're just pronating and supinating our arm into our wrist joint, this part of our arm. Good. Just working a little bit. And we're going to switch the arms. Start here. So neutral, one way, open, around. It's important to maintain that strength. So there's flexion in that shoulder, extension in the elbow, and we're just rotating into that wrist joint. And bring it down. So we're going to do the same thing, but now we're going to bring our arms out into abduction. So we're going to rotate, rotate. Head and neck in line with that spine. Three, four. So like you're turning a knob, that's all you're trying to do. Turn that knob. Six, seven, eight, nine. Last one and bring it down. So let's just work those wrists. So I'm gonna say use one. So the best way to do it is if you have a table, put that table so that the wrist can go down and curl it in. Let it go out, curl it in, down. So all I'm doing is holding it and just allowing that wrist to do it. If you want to squeeze it, important muscles to use in your wrist. There's so many little muscles, extenders and flexors, making sure that they work effectively. Your bicep also controls them as well as the forearm muscles. Good. Three, two, last one, and relax it. Let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm pretending there's an imaginary counter or table here. If you have a real one, go ahead. You can put it here. You can lean forward. Just watch that back. Watch your back. Keep your neck tight. So I'm just going to hold it up so you can see. So I'm, flex I'm extending it and flexing my wrist. Gently, just working with those wrist muscles. Obviously, my left wrist doesn't have as much grip. I can tell. So everyone has sides that are stronger and weaker. I'm a right-handed person, so my right hand is probably my stronger side. So I can see that. Three, two, last one. And I'm going to take a deep breath in. Exhale. And we're just going to stretch it out. I'm going to have you sit in the front. Just stretch out that hamstring, hinge forward, grab on your ankle. Breathe in. Exhale. Take whatever time you need to stretch. If you feel like you want to do this whole workout again, you can start it and restart it and do more sets. You can go through the whole workout or you can pause at different points and do more sets of each exercise that we do. Different ways to do it, I vertically loaded and we got through everything in a total body sense. But if you have more time, you can do it three times and just go through each exercise and then go back to the beginning and go through each exercise. or you can pause after I do each exercise and you go back and do two more sets of those exercises and then move on to the next exercise. All are very adequate ways to train your body to stay strong while you're at home. Also walking, simple exercise inside, outside, walk around your yard. If you have a nice neighborhood, you want to walk in your neighborhood. Anything you can do. 
to stay healthy and happy while you're at home. Also very important. And take that right leg. If you can, you cross it. If you can't, do the best you can. So all I'm doing is stretching through my hip, my glutes. I'm not going to pull too hard because I feel this stretch right away. You don't have to do crazy stretching. When I stretch, you're, you're just trying to increase the range of motion in through a joint. So I'm trying to increase the range of motion into my hip joint in all different ways. So right now, also into that knee joint because I'm pushing my knee outward. Switching sides, I'm gonna take the other leg, I take it in, and I feel that stretch into that glute, into the hamstring, into the inner thigh. There's a lot of chair yoga classes on here too. Highly recommend some of those. Breathing techniques as well, relaxation techniques. Any type of meditation also healthy and helpful for your body and for your mind. And release. So we're gonna do one more stretch and we're gonna loosen it up. I'm gonna have you stand up. Or I'm gonna go sideways. So I'm gonna put my hands on that chair and I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna just stretch and lengthen my spine, my head. So if you take a yoga class and you know what um, downward facing dog is, this is just almost like a modified downward facing dog. So I'm getting into my hamstrings, calves, and upper body. I'm going to bend my knees and I'm going to come on up. Deep breath in. And thank you guys. I hope you enjoyed that workout and I hope you stay healthy and fit while you're at home.